Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Again, thank you all for joining us this morning in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day, wherever you are. Who wants to lead us in prayer? Torian. Hi. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> dear Lord, thank you for this day I've given us. I uh, pray that we can have a good church session mm -hmm. and we can learn new things. Be blessed. Have a good day. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. I figured I'd get my kids out of the way. <laughs> that way they don't have the rock, paper, scissor. I'll just be the rock and the paper and the scissor. <laughs> All right. Who has a testimony? I do, Pastor. Who said that? Uh, Terrence. <laughs> indeed, 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 I do. What a spectacular one. I, I'll, I'll go last. Um, yesterday when I was uh, driving to a workshop uh, for a safety orientation, um, I encountered a, uh, a driver who was very aggressive, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. and, and he was honking at pretty much everyone. It started with me for some reason. I do not know why. Um, and, and I told myself, no, I want him to calm down. And then we'll get there in time and it should be okay. Mm -hmm. And halfway through the driving, uh, he was mostly in the same direction as where I'm heading. Uh, and at one point, I think he actually pulled the middle finger at someone else at <laughs> the red light. I was like, of all the things you do, you want to do that. You know, it's like, you better stick your finger, you're going to lose it. And, 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 and you better drive safely after that. So, so once I got to my destination, was then I found out that he parked across the street from me. Wow. <laughs> and he didn't know that I was that driver that he parked at. Uh -huh. And so, and so he was crossing to where I was and I was just playing on my phone and I was looking up and, and, and we met each other's <laughs> eyes and I smiled at him and I told him, Hey, good afternoon. Uh -huh. And he, he was, he was, I guess he was taken aback. He was taken aback and he was like, as if, Whoa, did you just speak to me? <laughs> mm -hmm. yep, yep. And, 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 and he just walked away. Uh, but 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 I can tell that he he probably was shocked because of that, mm -hmm. and 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 he turned back. He turned back and he came to me. And he asked me, "Why did you say hi to me?" And I was like, <laughs> "Well, our eyes met. I I guess the right thing for me to do was to say hello. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? Screw you." <laughs> 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 so he was like, oh, that's actually a good reply. Okay, yeah, you have a good day too. And he went more jolly than ever. I said, okay, good, he's much happier now. And during the workshop itself too, <coughs> um, our, our, our safety orientation officer, basically our teacher for the day too, um, I could tell she was feeling very pissy that day. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, during uh, when she was showing us the ropes on, on, on the safety <laughs> and everything, I can totally tell the energy coming from her was very, was very mixed. Like she was both there in person, but she was not there in spirit. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It's like she, she, she was not happy to be there, but she, she tried to put a smile on her face. Oh, like I always say. <laughs> and, and, and I could feel that because I could tell that she doesn't want to be here. And, and so I told myself, how am I going to get her to be more relaxed and, and happy by teaching all of us? Because I knew I was not the only one that felt the energy, it was someone else too, like one of my, uh, of the other students. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I hope there's a way to do that. But during the first few, when we were going rotating through the first few machines, I made a, a horrible mistake. Um, and and she she basically snapped. She took the tool away from my hands, oh, wow. and she shouted, "Don't you ever do that again!" I was like, "Oh my gosh, okay, all right, I promise not to do that again." I still continue my anyway. 
the, the, the one lesson that I did learn is that, okay, she's actually thinking about our safety. I won't take it to heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> one for one, I don't want to lose my finger because of a saw. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and the more we went through the sessions, we went through from woodworking to metalwork. And once we entered metalworking, was then her attitude just shifted immediately 180 degrees. And that's when I found out she's not a woodworking gal, she's a metalworking gal. Ah. And she felt much more at home. And I was like, okay, bless you if you found your place here. Please be nicer to me. <laughs> In the end, she was much more open. She was chatty. She 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 talked more about herself and everything like that. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, once the lesson ended, um, she gave a briefing about about what went wrong, what can be improved, and 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 we're pretty much ready to become members. So I was part of a member already, mm -hmm. and, and and she didn't bring up about my mistake at all. And I was like, thank goodness. But I did tell her I apologize for made any mistakes. And she was like, no, you're totally fine. You didn't lose any fingers. You listen to me. And as soon as you find a mistake, you learn her immediately. That's totally fine. And I was like, okay, good. She's much happier. Right. Yeah. And, and, and she's Ooh. willing to help me immediately. <laughs> How many questions out there? Ooh, that's delicious. Well, and the beautiful thing about what you're telling us is you help influence a shift in energy by showing her a truth. What was the truth? This is how you're supposed to be happy. The end result was prayer, affirmation. I want peace with this woman so she stopped yelling at me. <laughs> but more importantly, I'm not gonna, here's what people should really take what you just said. You didn't take it personal. You basically went in and kind of felt her energy, sensed her energy, felt something was off, right? And then said, you know what? She's looking out for my safety. Didn't lose a finger, good with that one. Then you discover, wow, this is not her comfort zone. She's out of her element. That would be like a, an opera singer trying to rap. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. It would be really funny. <laughs> well, if you think about it, both of them still use vocal skills, regardless of what they are in the terms of their genre. <laughs> but they would be out of their element. Once she found her element, and you went, oh, this is where you're comfortable, the tension. Now, here's what he was saying. I felt the energy of the room ease up. Before, there was tension. Remember, we always give the example of walking into a tense place and you can sense that tension and then you start scanning the room. Oh, it's the instructor. She's the one who's tense. Wow. How can I, here's the perfect one, send her the good, the holy, and the beautiful to help lighten her day? Because at the end of the day, our object is to Send them love and show them the truth. Just like you did with the man on the plane. He was having a miserable day until he finally met you. She was having a miserable day until she finally met you. Make sense? And you all do this so easily and eloquently. You ain't got to so hold signs up and blow whistles and <laughs> <laughs> do all that kind of stuff. Hey, man. Anyone else? All right. I told you all. You got one more? Okay. <laughs> all right. We all good? All righty. I did do an interesting thing that I shared with y'all before with my eyes. Took um, my optometry trust. Hello, Brother Sudi with the fresh haircut. <laughs> and this was a new optometry that I had never went to before. But Holy Spirit had me take my last year exam to him. And I said, okay, I know I'm, I never ever done this. I said, okay. So I take it and I put it in my brain and I get there and I said, well, I have my, my, my results for my last year exam. And I give it to him. He, oh, okay. And he takes it and he's looking at it and he does my exam and he, he goes away and he comes back 
And he goes, this is interesting. He says, your exams from last year are completely different. I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> your left eye is flipped to your right eye and your right eye flipped to your left eye. You are not. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm an alien. <laughs> and he kind of looked at me and laughed. You scrubbed the doctor. <laughs> well, he did not understand. You're in the world, but you're not what? Lost the world. So oh. if you're not of the world, then where are you from? <laughs> I knew I was from Mars. Spirit. Spirit. <laughs> you are okay. from spirit. Exactly. Pastor. Okay. Since you mentioned about that, okay, on Wednesday, I went to see a, a retina speci a specialist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, finally, uh, I got uh, this doctor to agree to uh, do a surgery on my eye. Uh -huh. okay. Before I went, the, the retina specialist was saying, you know, this is not uh, a life and death situation. So I got mad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because I said, yeah, yeah. Inside my heart, I was saying, yeah, this is not a life situation, but I cannot see. Right. <laughs> okay, how you can say that, uh, I mean, you think it's not important. She said, oh, you can, uh, we're going to uh, monitor you for a few months because your brain needs adjustment. <laughs> okay. All right. So I went back to my eye doctor again and I complained about him. So he sent me to another retina specialist. And this time, this guy, said, okay, Melissa, we're going to do uh, a surgery on you. Okay. So he explained to me about the surgery. And then this is exactly the surgery that Lily had years before, mm -hmm. okay? So I said, oh yeah, this is nothing new. I already know about it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, because he explained about the risk and everything, you know? Uh, I said, yeah, okay, uh, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then so I came back, I came back and I spoke to Lily. Hey, hey, hey you know, I am gonna have a eye surgery. And then I said, uh, last time when you had your eye surgery, was it on your right or on your left? She said, on, my, on her right. Mm -hmm. And it's also my right now. <laughs> <laughs> Twinsies. <laughs> so I said, oh my God. So this time is my turn to experience it. <laughs> yep, it's your turn. That is too funny. Or you can hit your eyes and save yourself the trouble. Or you, can, or you can heal your eyes and save yourself the trouble. Oh, I, I've been trying, I've been healing. The, the floater is still there. Well, the float, everybody has floaters. I got floaters. No, but the, this floater is big. So when I'm driving, so, so they're always there. They will come and block my eye. Like... I'm going to give you something after we get off that will help with the floaters and you don't have to do the surgery, but you have to do, it's, you have to do pineapple for three months, oh. morning and night, because the pineapple, what it does for the floaters, they, the scientists found out that the skin and the rind, if you cut it, most people don't know how to cut a pineapple. If you hold a pineapple and set it down, most people cut it that way. That's the wrong way. You take the pineapple and turn it sideways and slice it. That's how you properly cut a pineapple. And you eat the pineapple pieces, just two slices in the morning, two at night, every single day for 90 days and see what happens. Just see what happens. Oh. What do you have to lose? Yeah. If the floaters are still there, do the surgery. If not, hey, pastor was right. Didn't cost you nothing, didn't cost you nothing but some pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else? All right. Today we're on page 561, and we're on lesson number 14. Yay! Hey, hey. Teaching for truth. And everything that you have all told me was teaching about truth. When Anson met the person who was doing the safety, you have to say law of attraction. 
right? Mm -hmm. How so? You can't make the person honking at you and being rude on the freeway who's having a bad morning walk across the street and meet eyes with you. Who does that unless there's a fight or they're, they're stalking them or there's a chase and now you flipping him off and he's flipping you off and now there's words and now there's car crashes and all these crazy things that we see on TV. But instead, look what Anton did. He took a moment to teach. What was the teaching moment? Mm -hmm. Truth. What was the highest truth? Love. Yeah. It was love. And it baffled the person's mind because of this truth that they had to come back and ask him a question. Why did you say hi? Isn't that a peculiar question? But think about what it did for that person to make him think. Wow. And then be bold enough in forgiveness to come around and not say I'm sorry, but Hey, why'd you, why'd you speak to me after I know it was you that I was rude to? <laughs> yes. And now there was a teaching moment of truth. The truth is, Anson says, well, it's better than cursing you out or telling you you're a jerk or <laughs> making your day even more worse, right? Mm -hmm. You woke up that way. You probably heard someone tell you that. Right? And now here's someone comes and shows you the truth of who you are in what? Loving wisdom. Wow. And just in that instant, the energy shifted in that person where now he can no longer go be a jerk to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and then guess what's going to happen to him? Somebody's going to zip past him, cut him up, and flip him off and call him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to think. Yeah, I, I was that guy. I should not do that anymore. I was, <laughs> now I know how because what goes around the oh, oh, comes around. around. Your Bible says you reap what you what. So we all call it the law of attraction. You're all saying the same thing. So it was a moment of teaching, teaching him the highest truth of you don't have to behave this way. We can all get along, and I don't have to go down to your level of energy. Matter of fact, I can show you how to bring your energy up. Because where was he at on the emotional scale between one and 22? Definitely was not one. <laughs> we would say maybe angry, frustration. So from there up, very short time. Wow. Question number one, why must there be a lesson on teaching for truth? Of course. Of course, but why? <laughs> it, would why? Make, it's a common, it would make common sense, but why do most... And I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to pick on the pastors, but why come most of them get up there and tell you the, the truth? Because there's so many truths. Go ahead. Who's first? There are many, there are many truths. Oh, there are many truths? How many believe that? No, they're just fake news. <laughs> <laughs> there are many lies that are being taught as truths. There it is. There are many lies being taught as what? Truth. This is why I say this, and I'm not picking on them. Yes, I am. <laughs> but if they look at what the master said, he says, the works that I shall do, you shall do too. And what? Greater works. What works did he do? He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He made the maim. He healed the blind, the deaf, the mute, the dumb. So now... What truth are they telling you? He showed you the truth of what you could do, what you could become, how to become it. He told you the truth of who you are as a child of God. He told you who you are as one with God, yes? So now, not only in the religious circle, we have to look at the government. The government does not tell you the truth. Mm, true, yes. So now, look at your... and. I'm going to say this very carefully. Look at your educational system. Mm. Not that it's bad, but there are certain truths that are being withheld. It's like you're telling the truth, but not the whole truth. Exactly. <laughs> and now the whole big debate now 
is the critical race theory here in America on if it is and if it shouldn't and so forth and so on. Yes. And uh, didn't we know that we, we all live in a world that we call illusion? So how can there be any truth? Exactly, exactly. Now watch this. This is how generational curses continue. Mm. Because of that, grandmama's truth. And then they stay in lack. They stay in abusive relationship. They stay in ghettos. They stay in poverty. They stay sick. They stay mm. depressed. Then they die because... Big mama died at 65 of this type of disease and or my grandfather died, his father died and his father died, right? So now you have <clears throat> misinformation within the cultures. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm, I'm picking on everybody a little bit because mm -hmm. as we go in, we have to teach them the truth. Mm -hmm. Student has a clear picture of her students that she mentors and teaches every day. There are certain truths that she cannot tell them because she'll lose her job. <laughs> oh. Because she has to stay within the system of the guidelines of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Preachers do the same thing. You notice that? Mm. Think about it. They do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lily. Uh, Melissa and I used to have a discussion. She, she would always feel uh, very bad because when she tell people the truth and people just could not accept it. Mm -hmm. And oh. then um, I, I told her, I said, well, people want to know the truth, but they don't want to know the whole truth. So Ooh, keep 10% to yourself. <laughs> And sometimes you have to keep that 10 to yourself. Yeah. Realistically. Oh, and that we're going to bring that point up again. And thank you for saying that. Question number two. Easy. We might as well just skip it because you already know the answer. What will make you free and how? Truth. Telling the truth. How? But how will it make you free? Nobody ever teaches you the how. They tell you truth. Yes. Yes. You know how many people won't accept the truth? When you go to them and tell them they're whole and they're. <coughs> I got hit with a fever. I'm about to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true, especially as a teacher yourself. Yes. So now. Once we begin to teach them how, 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 here's how. Anson said it best. I have to accept by what? Understanding who the source is, what the truth is, what is the truth? Only God is real. That's the only truth. Only God is real. Wow. Now, once I connect myself that <clears throat> only God is real and this is the only truth, now this is how I become free. Why? He gave me free will to do what? Create as he creates. That's the freedom. So now when you go into your Bibles and you hear this scripture that says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What that means is the perfect mind of freedom. That's what that means. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. The perfect mind of what? Freedom to create. What did the master do? He showed you how to manipulate the energy in this planet. At every place. Whether you call it faith, whether you call it belief, whether you call it a law, whatever, he showed you. Question number three, we already answered it. What is the truth? Only God is real. How do you obtain this truth? Anson said it earlier, you have to accept it. Most people don't accept the truth and Lily said it best. <clears throat> they only want to hear part of, part. they only want to hear that part. And then watch this. I'll pick on my children because I can, because I love them dearly. But when they used to get caught in their lies <laughs> and I would try to get the truth out of them. <laughs> Y'all see where it is? Oh, I was trying God. to pain, even though I had the evidence. <laughs> Here's the video of you doing this. I see you. You didn't tweak, you didn't mop. <laughs> I'm 
with you. <laughs> but once we obtain the truth, guess what? The truth made him free. Now I can't all go back and manipulate and lie to dad anymore because now this is the truth. I might not like the truth. I might not want to accept this truth. But this is the truth that has to be what? Administered here and now to make me what? Free. Because well, I want to speak my truth in my highest love. Well, right? Yes. But in this case, Pastor, uh, the, the reason why the children lie to the parents because they're afraid that the parents will know the truth, what they're doing, right? They're afraid yeah. to be reprimanded because uh -huh. it, uh, it will not, uh, the parents will not approve, right? But we know, we know as parents that the kids are lying to us, okay? But even you confront them, sometimes they will say the truth, sometimes they don't, they still insist. Yep, exactly. So, so, so they, they cannot free themselves either unless they come out and say it out. We have to help them. But think about how they, how did they get to the lies because of the fear? Where did the fear come from? We reprimanded them. Yeah, don't touch, don't <laughs> touch the stove, right? Go ahead, Sudi. Yeah, the, the fear come from past experience because last time maybe they told the truth and they got punished anyway. Got punished anyway. Is that what happened? Told the truth and got punished anyway? Yep, so you see? See, now he tells the truth. <laughs> so they, they, they say it's better not to tell the truth. <laughs> I know, but the thing is, I have to learn also. That's the lesson. He's a teacher to me also. My lesson is, okay, he has free will to choose and think and act freely as he chooses. My job is to teach him, hey, there's a path that you have to go on that is decently orderly. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, while all along, you can create your own reality and here's how you do it. So when your Bible says, train your child up in the ways of the Lord, this is how you do it. So when I do strange things around the house, supernatural things, to them, is it normal? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. So when I go, let me show you this, and I do it to them, they're like, Okay, and they go, can we play the PlayStation? And I'm like, this is better than the PlayStation, are you kidding me? No, they don't agree with you. <laughs> and they're like, no. They, you do no. This. This is, That's your thing. Yeah, this is your thing. You do this all day long. We see you do this all day long. <laughs> you know, the first two times it was, ooh, now, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, but this is the thing, Pastor. We're supposed to contain ourselves. And that, that was the lesson. I had to learn the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, and most patience, 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 patience. Oh, patience was a great teacher and still a great teacher. Teaches me patience. I don't scream and yell, not all the time, sometimes still kind of, sort of. But <laughs> you know, I learned that you have to be careful doing that. There was one, two days, one or two days. I was so high, Pastor. I was so high. I was telling myself I'm not myself. But I was happy. I was dancing. I was laughing. So crazy. You must have with somebody who really understands you. <laughs> or else, you know, it's like, what? Yeah, it baffles their mind. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Really, it's very hard to contain yourself. Yes, and that was the lesson between learning the truth. The truth was, I can't control them. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. As much as I want to, I can't control them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when they turn of legal age and they leave, they can go do whatever they want and I can gripe and moan and scream and what I'm gonna do, put them on punishment in his own house? <laughs> 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 grounded from his own car what <laughs> it ain't happening <laughs> so I come to find out very quick I have very limited control but I have to learn to be a great teacher 
And then I had to learn, here's the biggest lesson I learned. We could probably close right now. Life is a great teacher. It will teach you better than anything ever can. <laughs> Affirmation. I speak my highest truth in loving wisdom. Yes, I do. Yes, you're a blessed indeed. Yet in the world, you do not know it, but you have the means for learning it and seeing it quite clearly. The Holy Spirit uses logic as easily as well as does the ego, except that his conclusions are not what? Insane. They're not crazy. They take a direction exactly opposite, pointing as clearly to heaven. Notice I didn't point out. <laughs> as the ego points to darkness and death. We have followed much of the ego's logic and have seen the, its logical conclusions. And have seen them, we have realized that they cannot be seen except in illusions, like Lily said, but there alone, their seeming clearness seems to be clearly seen. Let us now turn away from them and follow the simple logic by which the Holy Spirit teaches the simple conclusion that speak for truth and only truth. Now, I tell you this, <clears throat> there are three truths that you must understand. There's individual truths, global truths, universal truths. You all, if, if you want me to break them down, I can, but you can kind of understand these truths, yes? Yes. Okay. Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There is no separation, not from each other, not from God, and not from anything that is. This truth I will repeat over and over and over and you'll say, Pastor, you sound like a broken record. Yes, I do. <laughs> because I cannot lie to you and I want you to know the what? Truth. This observation I will make again and again. Here's the thing. <clears throat> we asked the question, how do you obtain it? Act as if you were separate from nothing or anybody. And so let me ask you a question. And this, this is far-fetched. But when the Holy Spirit dropped into your spirit to speak to the one who cut you off on the freeway, who was very rude, did you see yourself separate from him speaking? Hi, is that a connector or is that a separator? Even though we call it an introduction, yes? It could have been, hey, you freaking jerk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, I know my ego side was throwing pressures <laughs> left and right. Oh, the but I told myself that, you know, it's, he's probably in a rush and he needed to, to use the loo or something. I'm going to shove it off. It's fine. <laughs> so you could not see yourself separate from him. So instead, you said, you know what? Hey, when people do it to me, I said, oh, they got to go poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta it's go a, it's a true emergency. Nature's calling. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so act as if you were separate from nothing and no one. And you will heal your tomorrow. Glory. This is the greatest secret of all time. It is the answer for which humanity has searched for millennia. It is the solution for which they have worked, the revelation for which they have prayed. Act as if you are separated from nothing and you will heal your world. Ah. If you think about this. If everyone, 7.5 billion people on this planet acted, if we were united and functioned as one, how would the world be now? Perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh. Perfect. You wouldn't have what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. You wouldn't have what's going on in Afghanistan, Syria. You wouldn't have any of these things going on. Does that make sense? understand that is about power with not power over that's un, that's the secret power with but when they get in a position of power 
They want to overpower you because they don't think they can hold on to it. This is why the people in your government hold on so tightly to their positions of their power because they're afraid to lose it. Fear. Start telling the truth when? Now, which you always have. This is not for you. This is for everybody else. And never stop. Begin by telling the truth to who? Self. What's the truth? I'm beautiful. I'm sexy. I'm handsome. I'm rich. I'm abundant. I'm prosperous. What is not the truth? I'm sick. I'm poor. Everybody hates me. I'm miserable. Dog even pooped on my food. <laughs> <laughs> tell the truth about yourself here's the truth about yourself you are love you are love when people can look in the mirror and tell themselves I love you and really mean it and fall here's the thing fall in love with them not in a narcissistic way now let me have to put that in there because I don't want all the narcissists to go oh I love me <laughs> The guy who cut Antonov really loved himself, didn't he? <laughs> mm. He loved himself so much that he did not want to share the freeway or abide by the laws of the freeway. Think about that. Then tell the truth to yourself about another. What's the truth? You are God. No, Pastor, I am not. How many months did I get y'all to finally kind of sort of, and you're still kind of on the fence about it? <laughs> not too long about two years yeah, about two years <laughs> who's counting <laughs> then tell the truth to yourself about another then tell the truth about yourself to another then tell the truth about another to that other finally tell the truth to everyone about everything Make sense? Someone read the next one, please. Ultimately, all real communication is about the truth. About mm. truth. Hold that thought. Hold that hold. What did he just say? All oh, real communications. This is a word planet. Everything is dictated by words. Everything is about communication. You're either communicating with nature, you're communicating with one another, you're communicating with the animals of this planet, you're beasts of this planet. You're always communicating. And the communication is about the truth. Go ahead. And ultimately, the only real truth is love. Amen. That is why when love is present, so is communication. Ooh, hold that. How many of y'all have had pleasant conversations with a good friend or a loved one? Mm -hmm. wow. so now when love is present communication flows Does that makes sense wow now we become what one now we watch this now we don't lie to each other i don't have to come in like anton said with the safety worker with the smile even though there was pain there was hurt Make sense? Oh, okay. so Pastor, if our yeah. communication is not uh, smooth, you can feel it because uh, mm -hmm. there is a resistance maybe, yeah? Yes. Uh, Indeed. Mostly no. it's resistance. It's not, it's, not, it's not smooth. So now what happens is when there is no smooth communications, there has there tends to be resistance with the other one on the next meeting if there is another one because now we can't communicate so now you often hear them people oh, i can't talk to them they don't listen mm -hmm. and we you often hear this over and over oh i can't talk to them i can't talk to them or they won't talk to me one or the other yeah. there's the love present yeah what and like communication is difficult, it is a sign that love is not fully present. There it is. Sorry, read the, the next one. Yep. Thank you. These are the five levels of truth telling. This is 
the fivefold path to freedom. The truth shall set you free. This teaching is about truth. Not my truth, but God's truth. Seek the truth, say the truth, love the truth every day. Oh, there's your five. Thank you, sir. You'll hear it again. Mm-hmm. As with all profound spiritual truth, this statement opens itself to an immediate misinterpretation. The mystery clears a bit the moment one decides what is the highest good one could do for oneself. And when the absolute highest choice is made, the mystery dissolves, the circle completes itself, and the highest good for you becomes the highest good for another. So when we tell them the highest good, which is their truth, it is the highest good for ourselves. Because at the end of the day, Anson didn't want to see that person suffer any longer, and neither do we. So it's either to go in what? With peace rather than war. It may take lifetimes to understand this and even more lifetimes to implement for this truth revolves around an even greater one. What you do for self, you do for another. Wow. What you do for another, you do for the self. Capital S. This is because you and the other are what? One. So when people ask me, pastor, how do I get out of judgment? I say, see that person as yourself. Oh, I can't. Oh, that person's, that person's gay. I've seen him kiss another man. Oh, I don't and now the, all, the, all the separations come up and I go, well, you, if you have that, you'll never get out of it. You'll never get there. And then they'll start with all the, well, this and that and Jesus and then, then they'll do, that's a sin and that, that and all these other things. Well, you ask me, here it is. This is how you do it. But they want it. As somebody said earlier, they don't want to accept that truth. Mm. They have to justify holding on to what they've been taught because they felt that they reveal what was misunderstood and mistaught. They are wrong. And who wants to be wrong? Mm. Nobody wants to be told they're wrong. (laughs) And this is because there's nothing but you. All the masters, every last one, Buddha, Yeshua, Muhammad, Christ, every last one of them, all who walked your planet taught this. Everyone said it in their only way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, as much as you have done unto one, the least of my brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. You've all heard that before? Mm-hmm. Yes. It was even brought down simpler. Do unto others if you would have done unto yourself. <laughs> Pretty simple. Now, if here's interesting, if people really, really believe that and acted that, don't you think we wouldn't be in the situation we'd be in now? Mm-hmm. Just, uh, so I have to think maybe sometimes people like to be abused. I don't know. Maybe people like being abused. I know some people love misery, literally, and I go, wow. But that's their choice. Um, Pastor, if perhaps uh, people have um, people, like you said, um, like Jesus said, uh, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they're mm-hmm. doing. Right. They are so confused in their mind mm-hmm. that they also do not know whether they're not aware that they're not doing the right thing or they're not talking the right thing or they're not even expressing the, what they really want. So correct. All the time, all the time when we meet people, they have double meaning all the time. Mm. Yep. I, I really hate this, you know, because <laughs> why you don't tell me the truth, you know? <laughs> you know, you put people hanging in the air like, mm-hmm. you know. And once you know their feelings and their thoughts, because how many of you know when they're not being truthful? We oh. all, we know, we know. So now, your your instant prayer should be, Holy Spirit, what can I do to what? Soothe their broken heart. At the end of the day, there's a broken heart. Whether it be embarrassment for why they're lying to you, whether it be guilt, whether it be shame, whatever they want to label it. Why? And then when you call them out on them, they're more shame, or now they're rebellious. 
defensive. And then you have the very few percentage. Yeah, you caught me. Yeah, you got me. Mm. And then now that you caught me, here's the here's the one percent that will say, you know what? Yep, that's me. Those are the ones that we are teaching now. Those are the ones that are looking for the truth. Those are the ones that are seeking. Those are the ones that are knocking. Those are the ones that are finding their paths and saying, you know what? What I've been taught is erroneous because in my spirit, I know the truth. Everyone who hears this in their spirit knows it's the truth, but because of other things, it, it messes with what they've been taught in terms of a belief. And that's what's been dangerous. My brother said this, <clears throat> which is so true. He says, how be it in vain do they teach the commandments and the doctrines of men? And what he was saying is, we've been tradition for so long that we have not become spiritual. We've lost the spiritual path. That now it's what they had done and this person has done and this person has done and this person and all of it has been worth nothing. None of it has worked. So now you have all these organizations, <clears throat> all these meetings, all these paces, and everybody goes in sick. And how do they leave? Sick. sick. Mm -hmm. You see the point? Yeah. All right. Yet this has remained the most people merely a grand esoteric truth with little practical application. <clears throat> in fact, it is the most practical, applicable, it is the most practical, applicable esoteric truth of all time. It is important in relationships to remember this truth, for without it, relationship will be very, 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 very difficult. <clears throat> whether it be with your children, whether it be with your spouse, whether it be with your students, whether it be with your congregation, whether it be with your political party, whether it be with society, culture, whatever. So let's go back to the practical application of this wisdom and step away from the purely spiritual esoteric aspect of it for just a moment, just for one moment. So often under old understanding, <clears throat> people well-meaning and well-intentioned and many very religious did what they thought would be best for the other person in their relationships. I've had pastors tell people in marriages that were abusive to stay. Mm -hmm. God will fix it. God will change their heart. And that person, I've seen people die under those pre premises. Yes. And it's so, I'll say this, sad of the misunderstanding because of that type of thinking. They meant well because of what they read in the book. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they would not put themselves in that situation. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sadly, all this produced in many cases, in most cases, was continued dysfunction of the relationship. It got worse. There is a small percentage where the one who is abusive, we intervene and do some things to them and they change. Mm -hmm. You do have those, but for the most part, one leaves or is trying to leave or trying to escape or trying to find freedom. Remember this, you are always a part because you're never a part. You're always a part of God because you're never a part from God. This is the truth of your being. So now, when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, why? Mm -hmm. Never apart. Why? Because we're what? One. <clears throat> we are what? Whole. So now you know the whole truth. Get that joke? <laughs> that, was our, that was our one pun for the day. <laughs> the truth has been food for the hungry soul that it has. I'm always, always asking Holy Spirit for the truth. Show me the truth. Holy Spirit, is this of you or is this of another source? Because I don't want to mislead or misinform anyone going to God. Ooh, you've heard this. 
Take and eat of it. The world has thirsted for this joy and this truth. Take and drink of it. Do this in remembrance of God. For truth is the body and joy is the blood of God who is love. Truth, joy, love. These three things are interchangeable. One leads to another, and it matters not in which order they appear. All lead to God, all are God. <clears throat> Make sense? Yes. Questions, comments, concerns? We had a whole lot more, but we said we'll cut it down because you guys are very, very, very intelligent. We don't have to, you always are at your highest truth anyway. All right, Trayvon, close us out. <laughs> Good work. Thank you for laying some good service. Pray that we'll have a blessed rest of our day and bless our meals and bless any places we're traveling to. And pray that tomorrow's service will be good too. Hey, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. We love you all. Once again, thank you all. Have a blessed day. We will see you all in the spirit and love and wisdom. And prayerfully, we will see you all tomorrow. Have a thank blessed you. day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.